Alright, so it's been a little while, but it's time to update the final two role guides for Season 6. Obviously, support is going to be covered here, and ADC will be coming shortly after, so if you don't want to miss that, then finger blast that sub button and ping the notification bell. These guides take a long time to make, so any support is greatly appreciated. Alright, so let's kick it off with an overview of what I'm going to cover in the guide. If you want to skip to any specific section, then use the timestamps on screen or in a pinned comment down below. So first up, we'll cover the basics of the role. This section covers everything you need to know if you've never played the role before. You might want to skip this if you're familiar with Conquest Basics. Then Gods and Items, where I'll give an overview of what gods are successful as supports and why, plus some build examples and items that I like to use. After that we'll cover the laning phase in duo lane with your ADC. Then Rotations, Objectives, Skirmish Fights and Sieging. And finally, Team Fighting, Team Play and your role in late game engagements. Alright, so let's jump right into the guide with the basics of the support role. So as you may have guessed, supports are there to support their teammates. You're not usually the one to be carrying the team and getting pentakills, but you need to be there to save those carries from themselves and keep them alive so they can do their thing. Supports reside in the duo lane next to the Gold Fury alongside the ADC, hence duo lane because there's two of you. You'll spend some of your game laning with your ADC, but you'll also roam and help out wherever you're needed with the rest of the team, and when it comes to team fighting, you're often the one to provide peel and take enemies off your own carry gods so they can excel. Though some supports can also fill a more aggressive role, it depends on your playstyle. Key skills to have for supports would be good mapping and spatial awareness, good team play, and ability to play guardians and tanks effectively of course. Alright, so with the basics covered, let's move on to what types of gods you should be bringing into the support role and how to build them. So for the most part, the support role is populated by guardians, and pretty much every guardian works well enough to be considered a support. Though of course, some are better than others and a lot of them have varying playstyles within the class. Other classes are much less universally applicable to the support role, but I'll list a few here that are popular right now, but keep in mind this might change over time, and if you're new to the role, I suggest sticking to guardians. So a few assassins are quite popular and effective right now, most notably Fenrir, Nejar and Serket. Warriors see some marginal play as well, from the likes of Guan Yu, Amaterasu, Erlang Shen, Horus, and sometimes Achilles or Odin. I wouldn't recommend mages really, especially if you're new to the role, but some people can make Nox or Aphrodite work in the support role, though they play very differently than your typical tanky support. And as for hunters, they really aren't suited to the support role, and I'd recommend you stay away from them unless you're memeing around in casuals. Alright, so for the builds for supports, I'm only going to be covering builds for your typical guardians. A lot of support items are neutral and can be built across every class of god, but for the most part I'm going to be focusing on guardian build paths here. And of course, as always with all these role guides, these builds are more generic to fit any guardian and you will probably need to adjust the builds to your liking and according to your current game, but they're a good basis for people learning the role. Alright, so I'll quickly cover starting builds and your boot choices before going into full items for supports. So your starting blessing in support, pretty much regardless of who you're playing, is Guardian's Blessing. Supports can often have trouble keeping up in gold and farm, and the extra gold from minion assists and the extra gold per 5 seconds when evolved makes this blessing almost necessary for supports. Plus the sustain it gives each wave is really nice as well. With the rest of your starting gold, you'll want potions and potentially a tier 1 item like tier 1 shoes. Potions are really up to your personal preference, but for me I like to lean more towards health than mana sustain because Guardian's Blessing already gives you plenty of mana sustain if you're assisting on minions, but it really is up to you. As for your boots of choice for supports, my favourite choice at least right now is Reinforced Shoes. The sheer amount of defensive stats these provide is really crazy. Health, protections and CCR on one item is already strong and these are just on your boots. I find these really helpful with early game survivability and defense, but I also think Traveler's Shoes are viable if that's the playstyle you prefer. Having that extra movement speed, especially on certain supports like Assassins, can be very useful. CDR Boots and Pen Boots often sacrifice a lot of utility for the power they provide, and personally I don't really like them on supports as of now, but I think CDR Boots have some potential if that's what you like, and they have been popular in the past. Okay, so on to your full items as a support. So the key aura items are basically universally good in any support build, even if you're not a guardian. Those being Gauntlet of Thebes, Sovereignty and Heartward Amulet. All three of these provide extra defences to your other teammates, which is extremely useful as support to keep your carries alive. Spirit Robe is incredibly useful on most supports and I recommend you buy it in most of your builds to help deal with hard CC and it just has generally good stats. Its bigger brother Mantle of Discord is also really nice, though I do prefer Spirit Robe personally. Though I'm not against getting both in my build either really. 
Only Hunter's Garb is really nice for extra magical defense if you feel you're going to be fighting multiple people and getting good use out of its passive for that damage mitigation. Shogun's Kasari is great if you have a team comp that benefits from it, like a double Hunter comp, or a Hunter with Mercury and Jungle, Hunter with Freya and ADC, Hunter with Kronos mid, or something like that. Lotus Crown is pretty good, but of course only on healer supports that can make use of its passive, such as Sylvanas or Terra. Midgardian Mail is my go-to if auto-attack gods on the enemy team are giving me trouble. Slowing them and their attack speed when they hit you is really nice. Emperor's Armor is quite situational, but can be very powerful for defending against sieges or sieging yourself. Winged Blade is the go-to counter for slows. If you're playing a low mobility god like Sylvanas, you may want this if you're being caught out by heavy slows, but it's definitely not an item you want in every game. Stone of Binding is a nice rush item on gods with access to easy to hit hard CC to trigger its effect and make very aggressive early game plays, but this item definitely isn't for everyone and it's somewhat situational to your god and your playstyle. And finally, I'll quickly mention Lono's Mask for Assassin supports. Obviously this isn't a Guardian item, but for Assassins it's a great way of turning them more into tanks than Assassins for the support role. And as for support relics, the most common relics for support by far are Heavenly Wings, Shell and Horrific Emblem. All three of these affect multiple members of the team and are essential to have in any team comp. Usually two of these three is fine, just pick from them, but some supports can use more niche relics like Blink, other relics can be useful but these are the best ones in my opinion. Alright so that's all my item choices and why I would choose them. Let's finish up this section with a full build example for your typical Guardian. Start with Guardian's Blessing, Tier 1 Shoes, 2 Health and 2 Multi Potions. Finish your Shoes into Reinforced Shoes, then get Gauntlet of Thebes, Sovereignty, Only Hunter's Garb, Spirit Robe, and sell your Blessing for Mantle of Discord. And if the game goes long enough, sell your boots for Midgardia Mail and get the Elixir of Speed, and your two relics should be Heavenly Wings and Shell. Alright, so with gods and builds covered, let's move on to the 2v2 laning phase with your ADC. So the biggest tip I can give to anyone looking to improve at support is to work with your ADC. Look at how they play and try to adjust your own playstyle if necessary to make a cohesive duo lane with them. Even if you're not a typically aggressive player, you may want to bend that playstyle and play a bit more aggressive if you have an Ula who's wanting to pick fights early. It's better to be on the same page than both be doing different things and getting yourself killed because of it. Of course your ADC should hopefully afford you the same courtesies but that's not always how it works. But the common mistake I see a lot of duo lane players make is playing as if they're a solo laner and ignoring the needs and playstyle of their lane partner. And it leads to the downfall of a lot of potentially good duo lanes. So how you play the laning phase early on is dependent on a mix of your playstyle and god combined with your ADC's playstyle and god. It's also affected by the enemy duo lane comp as well. If you're going to be out cleared by something like an Izanami Sylvanas lane, you may want to play quite safe at the first wave and try to secure your own purple buff if you can. But if you're the ones winning clear and clearing quite fast, you can either quickly get to your own purple or go for an invade of either the enemy purple or the enemy red. Just be careful with these types of invades and keep an eye on the mid lane as the jungle mid combo might rotate to counter your invade. The laning phase with your ADC is mostly about getting your early levels done and getting a lead for you and your ADC, so you can rotate and assist the rest of the team. So let's move on to the mid game and talk about rotations, objectives and the like. So as I mentioned you'll be rotating from duo at some point around the mid game. When this happens varies from game to game and team to team, but generally it's once you've got a few levels and at minimum your boots online. You should hopefully have your guardians blessing evolved at this time as well. Once you leave the duo lane you'll want to be roaming and making as big an impact as you can and helping where you're needed. Usually you want to hang around mid as that's where you can get the most farm and can easily get to all three lanes and key jungle areas quickly if a fight develops. You'll often be taking fights with your mid laner and or your jungle and maybe even the side lanes will join as well if it's near their lane. These are what I would generally call mid game skirmish fights and they might often be over invades, objectives, towers, or just if you see someone out of position and want to pick them off. Often the results of these fights can determine who gets the objectives, even if they weren't originally fought over them. These fights are really what swing the game and can get you a huge lead if you are already ahead coming out of laning phases, or can bring you back into the game if you are behind. A 3 or 4 man wipe leading into a gold fury can easily result in a 3 to 4 thousand gold swing for the team, and you as the support are key to these fights, so make sure you're there. In terms of actual objectives, you're often the one to tank these things, especially in the mid game when the solo laners haven't rotated to join the fights yet. So for Furies, Pyromancer and Towers you may need to tank them but you can also zone effectively which is basically just keeping enemies away with your CC and taking their attention away from the objectives so your team can easily secure it. While we're on objectives I'll just talk a bit about wards as they're very important for every role but often support will be the one warding the most as they roam around a lot and pass by key ward spots. I can't stress the importance of sentry wards enough. Past about 10 minutes you should almost never be leaving the base as support without a sentry ward. Having vision control 
control over Furies and Fire Giant area with sentries to deny the enemy vision can literally be the difference between winning and losing a match. But earlier on, and if you have the spare gold later, warding common jungle pathways and entrances to lanes with regular wards is also important. You can even bait enemy sentry wards with a regular one and then sentry ward their sentry, but let's not get too far down the rabbit hole of ward wars, just buy them. And the final tip for this section, Try not to get too worked up on what the enemy support is doing. It's a trap I see a lot of new players falling into, but it's a really bad habit. Try to make proactive plays and don't always just follow what the enemy support is doing. If they're still in duo lane but you've decided to rotate, commit to that rotation and maybe try pressuring mid or taking a fight elsewhere while the enemy support pressures your ADC. If you try to always look for proactive decisions and make your own plays, you'll improve much faster than following what the enemy is doing. Alright, let's wrap this one up with a bit on team fighting and late game team play as a support. So the support role is arguably one of the most important and crucial roles for team fighting. Without the pillar of a good support player for the team, it sort of falls apart. How you play team fights is dependent on your god and your team comp as a whole. More aggressive supports like Bacchus, Ares or Assassin supports will often like to use that aggression and dive enemy backliners, and others like Kepri, Geb or Sylvanas are much better as defensive peel focus supports that keep their carries alive as their main priority, and some others fall somewhere in between. But even the most aggressive of supports will still need to find time to peel and be aware of their team. Usually the solo laner and the jungler will be doing most of the diving. Who you want to peel for first is dependent on your game really. If you're clearly being carried by your 12 and 0 ADC and he's doing mad damage but is getting focused and dived quite a lot, peel for them first and make them a priority. There's no point peeling for a mage that's 0 and 10 and is doing no damage in my opinion. That might sound harsh but if you want to win the game, concentrate your efforts on your best carry. Don't just leave the rest of your team to die of course but you get where I'm coming from with this. But it's also worth a mention that hunters are very important to be kept alive for objective pushes after team fights. Hunters shred fire giants, towers, phoenixes and titan much more effectively than any other class can after the fight, so keep that in mind. Having your hunter alive instead of your mage after a fight could be the difference between taking titan and not. But that's about it for this guide. If you did enjoy it, then be sure to check out my other guides, subscribe for more content in the future, and if you really loved it, then check out becoming a channel member using the join button below. Thanks for watching, see you guys in a new video later on, have a great day, and peace out you nerds.